conversation, a talk, especially an informal one between two or more people in which news and ideas are exchanged. preview of Brooklyn the quality that exists here. Today I am at Beauty Strike. I want Imani to introduce herself to us. Tell us where we are. What is Beauty Strike? Hey, it's Imani from Beauty Strike. Um, thank you, number one, for having me. And Beauty Strike is a vegan and cruelty-free cosmetic and beauty line. I'm a licensed esthetician. I perform facials, laser hair removal, and other services here. Um, and we have other licensed estheticians who provide quality service here as well. Um, yeah. <laughs> and here is Brooklyn. What part of Brooklyn is this exactly? This is Clinton Hills slash Fort Green. Okay. I always call it the Navy Yard. The, the Navy Yard is like right there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So Brooklyn is the theme, and I always ask everyone why Brooklyn. So I grew up in this neighborhood. I moved around a lot, but this neighborhood has always been a staple for my family. I've grown to see the neighborhood change so much. Like simple things from like. A corner store, like I see it being passed down from generation to generation. Mm -hmm. I wanted to create something like that, okay. um, where I could pass it down and continue to build and hold the neighborhood to be like a certain quality, and mm -hmm. and make sure that the people who were living in this neighborhood actually reap the benefits of being in the neighborhood long term. Yeah, um, that's important. Yeah, it is very much so. Um, but yeah, I've seen this neighborhood change so much from being like, there's literally nothing over here. Nothing. Literally nothing over here. And within me having this store here, three other stores have gotten built on this block. Mm -hmm. So um, it just lets me know that I make the right decisions, not the right now decisions, mm -hmm. you know? Okay, that's good. So I, like that. um, I, I really focus on that and just the longevity and just, just having a stake in Brooklyn because it something about up north mm -hmm. it's not that many black owned businesses that you find up but north versus down south, down south mm -hmm. there's always a black person owning a business mm -hmm. down south and they have equity and in, in their community mm -hmm. and i just want that for more um over here and more diverse fields like you mm -hmm. know very restaurants mm -hmm. wine i want um, there to be like tailors, uh, more than just like clothing stores, right, you know, right. I want there to be architects, I want there to be like uh, a Home Depot but black version, like, you know, um, um, not just find that down south. What are some of uh, business resources maybe yeah. that people who might have a business that's not, you know, your traditional clothing store mm -hmm. or retail store for that matter, mm -hmm. um, that they could look into? Um, Any that you might suggest? For me, I literally do my homework. I will sit on the computer for like hours when I first wake up. I wake up the crack of the boot crack of dawn every morning, and like that's when I feel like I want to go and like do my research on things. Mm -hmm. um, so I meditate for the first hour of my day. Then the next hour, I'm like looking everything up. So number one, I would look into your community. Mm -hmm. Like when the pandemic first hit. Um, there was PPE equipment that was required for stores to actually like mm -hmm. open in the first place. Yeah. Um, so we were selling our product line, our skincare line, um, for pickup, but we needed to make sure that everybody had these this equipment. So um, neighborhood resources like Myrtle Ave Brooklyn, that's like the that's the neighborhood like, okay. uh, community business approval. Yeah, business. Yeah. Um, they help businesses and it's just like a, a business coalition in the neighborhood. Every neighborhood has one or should have one and yeah, they if they don't then you should start one. Yeah. Um, and yeah, they provided like PPE equipment that we didn't have to pay for, which is amazing. Um, and then reaching out to the city as well, reaching okay. out to yeah. your city. I agree. Um, I'm fortunate enough to have like members in Congress that come here as my client, mm -hmm. so they kind of like connected the dots with certain things. Yeah. Um, but there are certain things that I didn't qualify for because I was um, just opening the brick and mortar part of it in mm -hmm. um, the pandemic. So right. Right. it was just like. 
just not yet. Yeah. Maybe not now. Like yeah. you said, you make yeah. the right decision. Yeah. It's just not the right now thing. You'll yeah. get it when it's time for you. Yeah, yeah. I'm not, I like that idea too. We're here. We're here. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Mm-hmm. Black woman in the business. And she is a individual sole mm-hmm. proprietor of mm-hmm. this business. She does not have a huge uh, board or a bunch of advisors. So it's possible for you to uh, mm-hmm. do the same. Crack a door in meditation. Meditation, I ask everybody if they meditate because it's an important, important aspect of just uh, hearing yourself yeah. and knowing what's right for your particular path. Mm-hmm. You know? I need to do some more meditating actually myself. Yeah. Um, so Brooklyn is is lucky to have you, Thank right? You. So one mm-hmm. thing I always like to do is find out what parts of Brooklyn you like to spend your time in. Mm-hmm. Well, I like to spend my time, I spend most of my time in this part of Brooklyn, obviously, because okay. my warehouse and my store is over here, okay. so my warehouse is walking warehouse. distance. Product, product, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> so my warehouse is a couple blocks from here in the Brooklyn Navy Yard, mm-hmm. so, and then my store is here, and then I have family members that live a couple blocks away, mm-hmm. so I spend most of my time in this area, um, but if not this area, I like biking throughout the mm-hmm throughout Brooklyn. Mm-hmm. Um, I live by Prospect Park, so I love going to the park. Mm-hmm. I love being over there. So I bike over there. Um, I biked here this morning from over mm-hmm. there. Um, and there's a bike thing right across the street. So yeah, I just park oh, the geez. bike. Where well, all the parking spaces mm. used to be. <laughs> I don't know why I'm going to city bike. Just go, where the car used to go? Yeah. Right here. Yeah. City yeah. Bike. Yep. That's how, it, that's how it is now. Yes. But um, yeah, I just like going through the park and here and even Domino Park there's this uh, grocery store that's like a thousand block from Domino Park and I just get some like fresh fruit and just sit in the park mm-hmm. just I still haven't found out where that park is I haven't been there I keep hearing about it it's right there you said right there it's right there it's literally right there it's down here yeah it's like a 10 minute bike ride from here well 10 minutes from me you were fast yeah. you're fast bike ride <laughs> I said that before, and my boyfriend like, he yeah, like, yeah, no, not that <laughs> This is not that <laughs> I do that to everybody. Is I think it's like, like, like No, it's way closer than that. Okay. Yeah, it's way closer than that. Um, I'm not good with street names. I still don't know what the street name is, and I've been, I've literally been around the corner. My studio was around the corner before I got the store, and I still don't know the name mm-hmm. of that street. I'm really horrible with that. That's like, funny. That's funny. You can be in Brooklyn your whole life and still not know what yeah, street name. Yeah. Um, because there are a lot of street names, and not for nothing, some of them we need to change. Okay. They're long gone individuals. Yeah. We need some um, other updates. street names. Yes. Yeah, mm-hmm. Some updated street names with some black people's names. In them. Mm-hmm. Um, so the last question I ask everyone is what is their Brooklyn promise, which is mm-hmm. essentially your brand promise for, um, for, you know, your Brooklyn clients. Anybody who comes here is going to be your Brooklyn client. Yeah. So once they walk through this door, that's what they're getting. Yeah. So I would like to hear, hear that from you guys. That's true. Um, well, my Brooklyn promise essentially is what I was saying before, like to stay in the, the yes. neighborhood and build that, that sweat equity in mm-hmm. the community and make sure that we continue to serve the community. Okay. Um, yeah, because you have a, a refrigerator out here. Mm-hmm. We need fridges are one way to do it. Yeah. Um, do you ever... Um, like do any sort of mentoring for any younger people? I have, I have. I definitely have some um, younger kids, teens who come in and help occasionally. Okay. And yeah, we talk about things and they see how business and retail works. Yeah. Um, so they get the behind the scenes, but it's not something that I like. I'd be like, hey, yeah. every, I, it's, it's just things that I don't share mm-hmm. on social media and stuff. I just do it. Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. Um, I should start sharing that stuff more. Well, maybe. I think it depends on the demand that you need because that's ultimately what it is. It's a tool for marketing. Yeah. So you want responses. And yeah. if it's not going to get responses, you don't need to post it. Well, or you need to. I'm monitor. just very private. I don't. I just don't share stuff. <laughs> also, because they're kids, I don't feel mm-hmm. like. Yeah, they need to be on public now, like social networks, unless their parents like do it. Like mm-hmm. their parents do stuff and then tag me, and mm-hmm. then I'm like, oh, okay, cool. Yeah, but um, other than that, I definitely want to have more resources for Black estheticians okay. and um, Black beauty professionals because I feel like there's not that many not that much knowledge mm-hmm. out here for us and for us to do what we do and to grow. Um, I was blessed and thankful to have my mom and my grandma mm-hmm. in in this field, in the beauty field. My grandma was in hair, my mom was in skin and makeup. So um, 
I was fortunate enough to have like that to foundation. see the foundation mm -hmm. and put in the work because my mom like <laughs> she made me earn things <laughs> like yeah she was awesome. she made me work so yeah. <laughs> That's good. Because yeah. if, if you don't, no one will. And then mm -hmm. some of the early introductions you get to work aren't going to be um, favorable. Yeah. You know? it, it's already. I don't know. These kids these days, I don't know. They don't be working. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Oh. Yeah. I don't it, know. It's different, though. I don't know what it looks like for what they're, they're available to do. You mm -hmm. know, because everything seems tied up mm -hmm. with other people doing it already. So it's like, okay, there's a whole new era of individuals just available. Mm -hmm. What are they doing? <laughs> so we're making new energy, you know, making new uh, programs or what, what exactly is, are we working towards? You know, that, I that's feel like that's a question that they need to answer and figure out mm -hmm. themselves, mm -hmm. but also do things in the meantime and keep yourself busy because uh, idle mind mm -hmm. is the devil's playground. Mm -hmm. um, so you don't want to get caught up in something bad mm -hmm. by doing nothing. Right. <laughs> um, I'd rather be doing something than doing mm -hmm. nothing. Uh, but to prepare myself for the role, and now I have worked in other spas as a receptionist, as like esthetician, mm -hmm. as esthetician in training, mm -hmm. as like, you know. So even though your parent, your mom, uh, and your grandma sort of um, introduced you to this line of work, what do you feel is, like, what made you, you want to do it? Because you could chose to rebel. Mm -hmm. and say, I'm going to be a lawyer. Or I did. <laughs> I did. I went to fashion school. Mm -hmm. I worked in fashion for a little while. I didn't really like it. I okay. didn't understand why people would really feel a type of way if somebody wore something last season. I'm like, girl, like. Right, it's a garment. <laughs> it's a piece of clothes. Like, like I didn't I didn't like that. I, I really like the marketing side of things. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I gravitated towards that. I pulled that. Um, but everybody would always ask me like, what lipstick are you wearing? Mm -hmm. What are you doing for your skin? Mm -hmm. How did you make that? Um, I've always been vocal about having eczema. Mm -hmm. um, I had a blog that I don't really post on. No, I don't really. I don't post on it at all. <laughs> <laughs> I had a blog and I used to do like sponsorships mm -hmm. and companies would ask me to go to their headquarters and stuff like that and I would talk about it so I ended up being like a beauty influencer mm -hmm. and then I was like I don't really like being a beauty influencer because I like doing the stuff okay. on people because right. um, that's what my mom had me start doing mm -hmm. like when in my teenage years like you were doing treatments mm -hmm. yeah my mom I remember the first thing that my mom made me do on somebody I was like petrified she made me do somebody's eyebrows and I was so scared my mom I just walk in my mom's having a skincare party regular things Regular Saturday for me, like my mom having a skincare party, cool. Um, I walk in though, she's like, oh, I told, I told, um, dang, oh my gosh. This is the first time I've ever forgotten this lady's name. Because it's okay, because it, it's, it's not a public name. It like <laughs> freaked me out. I was like, why did you tell her that I'm about to do her eyebrows? I've never done somebody's eyebrows before in my life. Um, I was so scared. What did, did you do? You did them. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I'm sure my mom know. told me that right. I was supposed to do it. And if I don't, if I tell my mom no, especially because she said it in front of everybody, I was like, oh my god. <laughs> And she just put me on the spot. So I was like, okay. How did the client like it? Like, she loved it. And she oh was like, oh my God. It's like, oh, I'm going to come back to you. How did you do it? And I was like, I don't know. <laughs> like, don't ask me. Something you lucky I did it. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Um, that I'm, so cute. So that was like the first time I did somebody's eyebrows. And I remember that day. Like, I remember what I was wearing. I remember how my hair was. Oh, I was like freaked out. And that was like 10 plus years ago. So. <laughs> So, I do challenges. Challenges doing things that you know you're good at. So yeah. That's that's yeah. one way to help identify. The reason that I ask that is because um, mm -hmm. I, I like for people to think about what makes them mm -hmm. do certain things. And um, and these are people watching um, mm -hmm. in particular. I think those of us who have chosen um, don't get to talk about it as much. You yeah. know? So, I always like to ask, what made you do that in particular? Yeah. Because we have influences we have family mm -hmm. we have needs that are just not unmet mm -hmm. in the community things like that that um, motivate us to do certain things so i like that yeah that you i also really that. like doing services mm -hmm. on people like i like being able to make somebody feel better mm -hmm. when they leave than what they came in mm -hmm. like i, I love that mm -hmm. what the heck? Mm -hmm. that was interesting <laughs> 
Oh. And beauty therapy definitely makes me feel better. Um, I've gotten a lot of wonderful remarks about how my skin is doing, mm -hmm. and I just personally feel better mm -hmm. without the breakage, the breakouts, and the discoloration, and mm -hmm. all the stuff she helped me heal through with my laser hair removal mm -hmm. treatment. And mm -hmm. what else did I get? I had some chemical, chemical pills. Mm -hmm. Oh man, those were fun. <laughs> those were the most fun. When is chemical pill season again? Um, September. Okay, so that's when I'll be getting another one. September. So, I don't have any questions. Do you have any questions for me? Um, what made you start this? Um, I realized that people listen to me when I talk. Right? Period. And Very I want to give them information mm -hmm. that's useful to know mm -hmm. versus just anything mm -hmm. to be said. So, um, black businesses in particular, women-owned businesses, always have a place in my heart. Yeah. So, I always feel like as a point of reference for people anyway, I might as well be referencing y'all yeah. right yeah thank so you. that's why i do it that's what it's for mm -hmm. um and i enjoy it and the being in brooklyn and i'm just here every day yeah thank even you. when i'm on vacation i'm in brooklyn <laughs> <laughs> obviously yeah I understand. so that will be all our light has shifted some of this is going to be you know we're going to cut it up but it'll be good thank you so much Mary. you're welcome thank you for having me <laughs>